Men and women of Leeds. Uh, my name is David. I'm a born again Christian. And just to let you know, we're not here to protest this event. We preach it a variety of events, but we're here today to preach the gospel. That's why we're here. We're here to preach the good news of salvation. To show you all how you can be saved and how you can be taken from the wrong path which you are currently on onto the right path. How you can divert yourself from the path of darkness and destruction onto the path of light and life. And it's all through a person. It says this in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26. It says, But once, at the end of the age, did he, Jesus, appear to take away sins by the sacrifice of himself. Once, men and women, once, once and for all. Once, never to be repeated. Once and for all at the end of the world. Did he, Christ, appear? He, he appeared, didn't he? Jesus. I know you've heard of Jesus. I know you've heard of Jesus. I know that many of you might spend a lot of time on YouTube following certain people but I know that you've all heard of Jesus. Well Jesus appeared men and women. He made himself visible, he appeared, the Messiah came at the end of the world and he appeared to take away sin. He appeared to make a way for you to be pardoned of your sin. And he did so by the sacrifice of himself. So guys, the scriptures say that there is a time to be born and there's a time to die. The Bible also says that there's a time of peace and there's a time of war. When you look around in the papers today, there was a story saying that it might be time to be getting conscripted soon. All, all around the world they're talking about the possibility of a World War Three. And what happens when you die? What, is the, what did Jesus say happens when you die? You live, in a, you live in the year 2024 and that's because it's revolving around the calendar that revolves around Jesus Christ. This man was born but the scriptures say that it was God who was manifest in the flesh through Jesus Christ. The scriptures say it's appointed unto man once to die and after this comes judgment. Your physical body does die but in that moment your spirit exits out of your body and appears before God and he makes a judgment and he decides where we're going to spend our eternity and he paid the atonement through his own blood. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself because some, something has separated us from God. The Bible says that it is sin that has separated us from God. And Jesus Christ is the only way to God, not through a false religion. Islam will not take you to God. Buddhism will not take you to God. Jesus Christ said there's one way to the one true living God and that that is through him and that he works through the truth. So we must believe in the truth. We must believe in the real God, not a false God, not a God of our own imagination, but the one true living God. And God was manifested in the flesh through Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and God was inside of Christ, preaching through Christ, declaring to people how they can be saved and have everlasting life with God. 
Turn to Jesus Christ today, people. Forty-six years ago, I was twenty. Maybe that's how old you are, twenty. And when I was about 17, 18, 19, 20, I had a lot of stuff. I had a job, I had friends, I had a back of weed. I had a lot of stuff, but I didn't have what I really wanted. You know what that was? I knew, in fact, I remember one time, out of my head, standing in front of a mirror, one of these full body lens mirrors. I was looking at myself, my eyes were bloodshot, my head was buzzing. And I was looking at myself and I knew that I was empty. I had no meaning in my life whatsoever. Thankfully, God was looking for me. And I was interested because I didn't want to grow up to be either like my dad or to be like some other people I've met, or some quite wealthy people, because I could see they didn't have any meaning in their life either. The Lord Jesus, when I bought a Bible, yeah, I felt a bit silly doing it, but I did it. See, I'm not from, most of us, we're not from religious backgrounds. The Lord Jesus has changed our lives, all right? 46 years ago, as a young man, I was looking for reality, for real, something real. And I bought a Bible, and I started reading through John's Gospel. And God, he began speaking to me through this book, the Bible. One of the things he said in John chapter 6, recording Jesus when he said, I am the bread of life. And let me tell you, when I read that, I believed it. And I came to believe over the following year, I, be I gave my life to Jesus when I was 21. I kept reading because I knew that there was something real in this book, the Bible. The time came after another experience of God. God graciously gave me signs, so I'd be no doubt. And the time came, I was about 21, I was living in a bed sit, a little mouse infested bed sit in Edgebaston, the, the rough side of Edgebaston in Birmingham. And the point came, I got down on the side of my bed one night, I had a little leaflet that I was given, I read it, and I got down on my knees and I prayed the prayer, and I asked Jesus Christ into my life to be my saviour. The next day, everything was different. The heaviness that I didn't even know I had was gone, it was like I was floating on air. The whole environment was like on steroids, it was like going from a little black and white TV, if any of you know that, to a, a full screen plasma high definition. Lightness, joy, inner, you, you just can't describe it. He changed my life, that was 46 years ago. Within about six months he healed me of a stutter, I used to have a speech impediment. You know what a speech impediment is, don't you? I couldn't speak properly. It's very debilitating. It's not fun. I've had it for about 15 years. Jesus heals. It's part of what's called salvation. Maybe you've got demon problems, right? He can deliver you. Maybe you're addicted. He can deliver you. He's got the power. He's alive. And he changed his life, he changed my life. That was 46 years ago. The Lord Jesus wants you in his family, in his kingdom. He doesn't want you to waste your life. He wants you to be in gear with him, fulfilling your real purpose in life. So my friend, enjoy your time in the arena. I know that it'll be good fun, but think about this. The real purpose of your life is to be in a relationship with your maker. You know, we hear on the uh, TV all the time, don't we? Are you in a relationship? Oh, I want to be in a relationship. Really? Get in a relationship with God as your father first. You do it through Jesus. Then you'll be in a great position to sort out your life. And God will give you good relationships. But you've got to put the 
horse before the cart. My friends, we know exactly some of the stuff that you're going through. Come to the Lord Jesus and he'll change your life for the better. God bless you today. So Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. You see, Jesus, he himself is the way to life. The path that he offers you to follow him upon is a path that leads to life, life and light. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ, He will show you the right path to take throughout your whole life upon earth. And He tells us to follow Him. That is exactly what he said to his disciples. Follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And they followed him. And they received the truth and the true way to live and the true way to walk. You see, by the grace of God, men and women, by the grace of God, we who are here preaching today have been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. He made himself known to us through the gospel, through his word. And we have began a journey of following him. You see, every single one of us who are here today are on a journey. We're all on a journey. But the journey, the journey that God wants you to be on is the one of a follower of his son. Jesus, he gave his life for us upon the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ laid his life down for us upon the cross. He gave his life on that cross for our sins. And he rose up again from the dead on the third day, men and women. Now each and every one of us, each and every one of you who are here today, have sinned and fallen short. To sin is to violate the holy law of God. And when you sin, you become separated from God. But God in heaven is merciful and he's reaching out to you today and giving you an opportunity today to respond, to change your mind and become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. To enter onto the journey that God wants you to be on. The path that God wants you to be on. The path which leads to life. You see, there's, in the eyes of God, there's only two types of people in the world. There's the saved and the unsaved. And there's two paths. There's a path of light and life and there's a path of darkness and destruction. And the masses, the majority on the broad path, the path of darkness which leads unto destruction. Jesus says, follow me and I will give you the light of life. The Holy Bible, God's authoritative, truthful word, teaches us that there is a way that's seeming right to man, but in the end, it is a way that leads to death. Now, death came into this world through sin, and you, we've all sinned, we're all sinners. 
You've all confessed today that you've either stolen something, watched pornography, that you engage in other sinful activities. You break one commandment from God's law, the scripture teaches that that, that, that man is accursed. If you don't keep the whole law all the time, I'm afraid you ain't good enough. But there was one man, born of a virgin, God incarnate, Jesus Christ. He lived a sinless, perfect life. And just as one man through which sin entered into the world, Adam, the figure of all men to come, who you, believe it or not, are all related to. We're all cousins, we're all family. So, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, he's come to abolish that sin, and he's been and he's done it. But the condition was, would you put your faith in him? You see, scripture teaches us that it's by grace we're saved, and through faith in his blood. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation, that's, that's a sacrifice. Actually, propitiations are all over the place. They're in pagan culture. where they sacrifice an animal to pay for the sins of the people, of a nation, or of a country at a particular time. And Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, He came to take away the sins of the world and be our propitiation to take away our sin. You see, we're in debt to God. We're fallen from grace. You have a sin nature in you. And by definition, that sin nature that is in you means you cannot please God no matter what you do. Doesn't matter how good you try to be. Doesn't matter whether you keep nine out of ten of those commandments. You ain't good enough until you have been atoned by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is only one way, folks, that leads to eternal life. It is a straight and a narrow one. And the name of that way, <laughs> by grace, is Jesus Christ. Jesus. I want you to remember that name. You've probably heard it a thousand times. But I'm only here to represent the true Jesus of the Bible. Not somebody else's Jesus. Not some phony interpretation made by the world to fit in with societal norms to please everybody. No, my Jesus, my Jesus of the Bible, he wasn't afraid to make people upset sometimes because out of love he wasn't afraid to challenge people on things like homosexuality, on things like adultery, on societal norms. Even back then we were having discussions in Jesus' day 2,000 years ago about the very same things we talk about today. These issues are not new, people. We've been here since the dawn of time. It's all to do with the sin nature of man. You cannot get to heaven, folks, through your own works, through your own deeds. You cannot be justified by the law. The Bible teaches us this. And I want you to remember Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment of the whole law perfect sinless life he led for you and died in your place on that cross. You deserve to be on that cross. He bore your whip marks. You deserve to be on that cross. He, he was there in your place. And not only did he die but he got the keys to death and hell and then even death couldn't hold him because for our justification he rose again from the grave. And I want you to know something else about this Jesus I preach. He's a living God. He isn't dead at all. He sits on a throne, he's in charge, the, the Father of his written has given all authority to Jesus Christ. That very Jesus who made you, who crafted you, he carefully thought of you at the beginning when you were made. He created you, he loves you, and he wants you so much to give your life to him. There is no way, folks, there is no way of your own selves you're ever going to make it. Please heed my warning. You guys are on a broad road that leads to destruction. Take the different path. Take the straight and the narrow one. Remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed. You don't know whether you're going to go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning. Take this chance now to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, to repent from your sin, and trust that the blood of Christ is enough to absolve you from all that sin, and that you can be in right standing with God through Christ. 
In Jesus' name, I bless you all. And I pray that God will open your eyes and help you to see the truth and convict your heart through the Holy Spirit of your sin condition. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men and women of Leeds, boys and girls, listen up. God is calling you today to repent. The Bible says, our times of ignorance, the Lord overlooked. God is overlooking your days of ignorance. But the Bible says, now God commands every man everywhere to repent. God is commanding you today to repent. To repent simply means to turn away from sin. Have a change of heart, have a change of mind. Change your heart, change your mind. Stop loving this world. Love God. Love God, your creator, the one who made the heavens and earth. And you can know him only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way, the only way to the Father, the only way to the Creator, the only way to life. Every other way leads to destruction. The way you are going right now leads to destruction. And God is asking you today, why do young men love violence? Why do you love violence? Why? Why do you, love, why do you love bloodshed? Why do you love the smell of blood, the taste of blood, the look of blood? Why? Why do you love violence? God is calling you today to repent. Turn away from your love for evil. Turn away from, for your, from your love for violence. And rather love God. Seek God with all your heart. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What will it profit you, men and women of Leeds? What will it profit you if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? Your soul is the most precious gift God gave to you. What will it profit you if you lose your soul? You gain the whole world, you gain all the money, you gain all the girls. You gain all the fights, you gain all the, the drugs and all the alcohol and all the porn and you gain it all but you lose your soul in the end. The Bible says it's all vanity. Vanity upon vanity, it's all vanity. It's all vanity and a chasing after the wind. God is calling you today to repent, turn away from violence, turn away from vanity, turn away from sin, turn away from disobeying God come to light come to Jesus Christ that you might be saved turn away from sin turn away from wickedness young men repent God is calling you today do not love violence love your creator like my brother said it's all bread and circuses the Roman Emperor gave bread and circus to the people of Rome to distract them turn them in the wrong direction same thing is happening today thousands of years later turn to Jesus Christ come to Jesus Christ stop being distracted by bread and circus it's a circus men and women it's just a circus and in the end it's all vanity what shall it profit your soul what shall it profit you if you lose your own soul Come to Jesus Christ today. Now I want you to hear the Bible before you go. The Bible says 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. If you do not believe in God, the God of this world has blinded your eyes. God is calling you today to repent. Open your eyes, wake up, smell the coffee, come to Jesus Christ. Stop being deceived by the devil. Stop being deceived by the God of this world. It's all a distraction. It's all vanity. Even if your best fighter wins, it's all vanity. Repent and come to the Lord Jesus Christ today that you might be saved, that your sins might be blotted out. Ask yourself this question. What can wash away your sins? Who is going to pay the penalty for your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Give him hell, I mean, give him heaven. Just give him hell. <laughs> Get me terminology right. <laughs> Good evening, people of Leeds. So we've come from uh, different places because we care about you. And we have a, an absolutely wonderful message to you. And the message is the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said, he said, I am the way, the truth, the, the life. I am the resurrection. And if you know anybody who has lost a, a, a parent, or lost a child, Jesus came to give us that wonderful hope that when we do die, we have a, we have a great hope. My father died 10 years ago. And two weeks before he died, he looked at me, he said, Kieran, he said, I'll be seeing you again because of Jesus Christ. I said, I know, Dad. And we cried together, but we laughed at death. Because the Bible says, and the Bible is God's word to us, you've got to read it. The Bible says, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting for those who believe in Christ Jesus? And Jesus came to give us life in all his fullness. But we, we have a problem though. We have a problem is we think we're God ourselves. That is idolatry in the Bible. If you have a strange God before the real God, like yourself, if you believe you are God and you think you are okay, and many people say, I'm okay, I don't need Jesus to wash me clean. I don't need his blood sacrifice to wash my sinful selfish sins away I don't need him you do need him if you want real life if you want it, your soul purified Jesus came to purify our souls and fill us with a new spirit the Holy Spirit we have the human spirit but it is a corruptible spirit we are all corruptible we are all open to selfishness. We make gods of money. We make gods of women. We make gods of celebrities. We're not to do that. We're to love our wives and not worship them. We're to, we can love football, but we're not to worship it. We've got to worship Jesus Christ because he is, like he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the resurrection. So we're here to tell you the good news. Powerful in your life, Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But the only way you can have this life is to humble yourself and admit the reality that you have sinned against the living God. Everybody on this street, you have sinned against the living God. You have the virus of sin in you. And if you have the virus of sin, you can never know God. You've got to humble yourself. You get before Jesus Christ, confess your sins to him. He is faithful and just to cleanse you of all sin. And then he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. You will be a new creation. You will be full of God's love. When Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, he said, love your enemies. And we can't even love our wives or our children. How many children are in homes? How many divorced husbands and wives? You know, the women say these days that they don't want to get married to the men because the men are too selfish. But then the men say, we don't want to get married to the women because the women are too selfish. So what's happened? What's happened? We've gone further and further away from God. We need to get back to God. We need to get back. We need to get our souls purified. And if you confess your sins, if you come to Jesus and admit that you are a sinner, and you fall short of God's glory. And that is the truth we all have. And so for us, we, uh, we have realized and understood that our sin completely separates us from a holy God. A holy God we are separated from. The God who created the, 
the heavens and the earth, the God who gave us life, He is holy, He is just, He is pure, and we are unholy, unjust, and we are impure. So we need to get before Him and confess our sins. Jesus came to set us free from sin and death. And if you humble yourself, get on your knees tonight, confess your sins, and He is faithful and just to cleanse you of all sin. Freedom, peace and joy in Jesus Christ only. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father but through me. And it's not Muhammad. It's not Confucius. It's nobody else on this planet. Jesus is God come in the flesh. And his blood is to purify our souls. And we all need our souls purifying. Imagine having all your sins washed away. Imagine the peace and the joy every wrong word you spoke every wrong motive you spoke with if you've stolen from your employer give it back if you've stolen some woman's virginity you can't give it back but if you confess your sins if you repent of your sins you can have your soul purified and every day will be a new day with God he will purify your soul he will transform you. And that's why he came to transform us. He said, unless a man is born again of the spirit and water, he shall not even see the kingdom of heaven. Oh, we come out here tonight to plead with you, to tell you the good news, that you must, you must, if you want freedom, peace and joy, you must come to Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for you. His blood is for you to wash your soul clean. And if you ignore this, you're sending yourself to hell in this life and in the next life. Because if you live a lie, you're going to hurt yourself and your people. If you live without love, you're going to hurt everybody also. Praise the holy name of Jesus. In the Bible, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in pastures green. He restores my soul and guides me for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before my enemies. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I married 37 years to the same woman. I love her deeply still because God fills me with a joy and a peace. And without God, you will never have that peace. You'll never have that joy. So come to Jesus and have your soul purified. Let today be the day when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. When you take it on the chin that you are a sinner separated from the living God because he is pure and we are impure. That is the truth about you. Wake up to the truth about yourself and come to Jesus Christ and have your soul purified. We all need purifying. We're not judging you. The, words of, the word of God will judge you on judgment day. But the Bible says no. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So men and women of Leeds, like I say, we, we come down here, we 
the times come down to events at the first direct arena and our heart, our purpose is that, that, that Jesus will be preached, that you would hear about him because life is only in him. Uh, eternal life is only to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, without Jesus Christ, you don't have life, the Bible says. But if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the gift of eternal life. The Bible says it's a trustworthy statement, worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Bible is very plain and clear in much of its content. And it tells us there the, the purpose and reason why he came into the world. And it was to save sinners. You see, God is a saving God. Jesus is the saviour of the world. And God, in his love for the men and women he made, sent his son Jesus. And Jesus willfully came from heaven. And he suffered and he bled and died upon that cross for you and for me. And he opened up a door, he opened up a way of salvation, he opened up a way to life. Jesus said, I am the door. Anyone who enters in by me shall be saved. And when you enter in by that law, sorry, when you enter in by that door, you begin a new path, a new journey, the journey to heaven, the journey to life, the path of life, the way of life. You see, that's what they call the Christian the, the Christian life. Um, in, the, in the first century, they call it the way. And in the Bible, it's referred to as the way. You see, and we are we are part of that way. We are on that journey, that journey of life. It's in and through Jesus. And it's important that you come to your senses. It's important that you change your mind about that path that you're on and turn to Christ and follow Christ and enter through that door and walk that narrow path, that narrow way, that narrow path that leads to life. Vital that you come to your senses. You see, you're, if you are an unbeliever and you just say, no, there's no God, it's just a big bang, we've evolved from monkeys, Look, God has shown himself to each and every one of us through creation. And we know that there is a God and there's no excuse for unbelief. And in fact, unbelief is sin. And in the Gospels, Jesus quite often rebuked unbelief, even in his followers. So unbelief is wrong, unbelief is sin. And it's important that you come to your senses about that. It's important that you wake up, come to your senses about the fact it's unreasonable for you to be an unbeliever but there is one who wants you to remain an unbeliever and it's the, the devil who in the bible is referred to as the god of this world who has blinded the minds of the unbelieving you see one way for him to blind the minds of the unbelieving is to get you distracted to get you distracted through amusement, through entertainment and to get you to be a worshipper of entertainment and that's why you have to be for entertainment, for amusement through following these misfits but the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine upon him. So yes, there is an enemy of your soul. And it's the devil. And he uses amusement, uses entertainment, uses many things to distract you from the truth. But the, the gospel, the truth is being preached today. And that's how men and women come to be saved, come to enter a new journey onto the path that leads to life when you hear the gospel and you believe it Jesus 
of Nazareth. He is the Son of God. He came to save sinners. And he gave his life upon that cross. He laid his life down. He gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. And whoever believes in him receives pardon from God, forgiveness. He died and rose again. And when you put your faith in him, he will pardon you, he'll forgive you. And you'll become a follower of him. And you'll be on the path that leads to life. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die once after this, the judgment. So what happens after death? Judgment. The Bible says all who are in the graves will hear the voice of the Son of Man and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. But Jesus would much rather see you being raised to life than he speaks and you're made to stand. That you're taken up, taken up to meet the Lord in the air and to be changed and to be with the Lord forever. He would much rather it be that way for you. But you must respond. You must respond to the gospel. Call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved. Amen.